He's fronted bands like Black Sabbath, collaborated with the likes of Kiss's Gene Simmons, and his music is charted on Billboard's Hot 100. Joining us on this week's Spotlight Music Series, we'd like to welcome singer-songwriter Ron Keel. So good to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Charleston is a lucky place to have you perform here. First I'm of all, I'm lucky to be here and you know, it's been, I was trying to look back on the last show. It's been almost 20 years wow. since I performed in the Charleston area. So I'm really excited about the big show tonight at the American Legion uh, post 166 in Goose Creek. Those folks have been uh, fantastic to, uh, to work with and the post vice director, uh, Lee Swarzak is uh, just a really opened the doors and the stage to me tonight. And uh, it's also a very special cause that we're representing and sponsoring tonight. Uh, guitars for Vets mm -hmm. and uh, Lee Burns the Charleston coordinator for Guitars for Vets has been a huge supporter of ours. Uh, guitars for Vets is a charity that I've been involved in for a, a number of years now. I'm one of the celebrity ambassadors and what we do is we put the healing power of music into the hands of our heroes, literally tens of thousands of free guitars and free guitar lessons mm -hmm. to our veterans with PTSD. So it's a cause that's very close to my heart. Yeah, we love Lee Burns. Uh, but when you talk about music as therapy and also your dedication to our veterans, why have you chosen them in particular? You know, I did a number of tours for the Department of Defense, touring our military bases all around the world. And I developed a really strong uh, affection and admiration for the men and women in our armed forces. I never served myself. I did register for the draft when I was 18, but I was on the road with a rock band and, <laughs> and I, I never did serve myself. So I try and do everything that I possibly can to support our veterans and our military. And the Guitars for Vets cause caught my attention in an online search in 2014. And I thought, I've got to get involved with this. Seeing the smile on a veteran's face when they learn to play their first chords and, oh, yeah. and uh, music really it's been my therapy all my life so to, to share that with with those people is an amazing experience you're, you're giving a gift but it's almost like you, you received tenfold. oh absolutely let's go back and let's talk about your career in music because as i alluded to in the very beginning i mean that's just barely the tip of the iceberg for you it is, and you had to mention the Black Sabbath thing right out of the shoots. I know I was in Black Sabbath for like two weeks in 1984, and it never. So I, what? I, it's I, Black <laughs> Sabbath. Come on now. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's pretty iconic, legendary metal band, and now I've been involved in a Black Sabbath tribute album with all of the ex members, all the guys that got fired or quit or never. <laughs> like this, like the alumni. And it's called Emerald Sabbath, and I got to sing three Black Sabbath songs on that record. So I'm really proud of that accomplishment. But when you think about the rock and roll lifestyle, the rock rock star lifestyle. You don't look worse for the wear, I have to say, after spending 40 years in the business. Well, so thank you for you, that. How do you think you, you maintained? Well, a lot time? of it, you, you just got to be smart and stay healthy and, you know, uh, good genes. Uh, the, the youth, the music and rock and roll in general is all about the, the wild and the young. And I, I've tried to, to maintain that level of, of uh, so the standard of excellence to where you know, I, I'm, I'm 60 now. Are you really? And uh, wow. I, really I try fantastic. and stay in shape. I, I work hard. I rehearse. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm very serious about my craft. But also, uh, it, the, the fact that you get to have fun and do what you love for a living doesn't hurt. Well, you know what? We've interviewed Glenn Sobel, Alice Cooper's drummer, oh, who's yeah. on tour, and he said the exact same thing. He said, you keep yourself healthy. You have to keep your head in the game because mm -hmm. the moment that you start straying, it can get kind of dangerous. But you just had an illustrious career all this time. How are you able to kind of jump from one thing to the next and to still, to this day, be doing what you love? Well, I think that some of my heroes, artists, that uh, David Bowie or, or Queen or some mm -hmm. of these artists that reinvented themselves like every six to ten years and you, you just have to keep exploring new territory you can't just stay in the same place and that's why I've gone from being uh, the metal <laughs> rocker to the cowboy <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in between I, I had a great career in, in metal and hard rock in the 80s but that all fell apart in the 90s. I turned to country music as a, my therapy mm -hmm. and started writing songs about real life and love and heartbreak and, and uh, 
working hard and playing hard. The songs about drinking beer and chasing women. Uh, you know, that's country music. And it, it, it was like being born again in the 90s. That was when Garth Brooks was huge and I was able to make a living. That's when I did the military tours for the Department of Defense right. as a country artist in the 90s. Um, and then I found a, a place about 20 years ago that's right in the middle. It's not hard rock or metal and it's not quite country. It's metal cowboy music. A lot of people call it Southern rock, because mm -hmm. I'm a Southern oh, guy. Yeah, I was born in Southern Savannah, just down the here. road, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got that went Southern. Went to the first grade here in Charleston. I went to first grade here in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. So I've got the, uh, the Southern roots, they run deep. Yeah. And, but the ho there's a part of Hollywood and Nashville and New York in there too, so you kind of mix it all up and I've spent a lot of time in those places and it comes out in my music. Well, before we get to your music, which we're gonna hear you perform in a little bit, but we do need to take a break. When we come back, I wanna hear more about how many albums you've sold and what you've worked on recently. So we're gonna do that, okay? In two okay. Minutes. All right, we'll be right back. We are back with Ron Keel, and just before we went to break, we're talking about the career you've had in music and how you've been able to more or less shape shift and, and kind of change your genres, which is really important to reinvent yourself as a musician, not to always just stay the same and to explore new territory, which I think keeps it very interesting for the audience as well and for people who are fans of yours. Um, but over the course of this career, how many albums have you come out with and about how many have you sold? Would you, you know, say? I lost track uh, of the actual, I know it's over 50 albums, but a lot of guest appearances, movie soundtracks, solo albums, albums with various bands and projects. And the fans have had a hard time keeping up with the twists and turns. Sure. The fans have, have kind of weathered the storm with me. Yeah. Some of them don't understand. And you've got, uh, the old school fans that bought my records in the 80s who are all, you know, yeah. Rod Keel, Metal <laughs> Cowboy. And then you've got fans in their 20s who never, they weren't even born at that point. Yeah. So you've got to keep re reinventing yourself That's and, and uh, making new fans along the way. But you've sold, what, millions of, of albums? Yeah, yeah. A lot of those were in the 80s. We had Gene Simmons from Kiss yes. producing our records in the 80s. Yeah. And the Kiss fans really bought into what we were doing because Gene was producing it. Uh, his endorsement, his name on the record was a huge help. The Right to Rock, which was our debut album produced by Gene Simmons, released in 85, was the biggest selling debut uh, album in A&M Records history. It, it was the really, was, fans, really. It was yeah. uh, a, an amazing roller coaster ride, and it still continues to this day. That's so wonderful. And you released this deluxe edition of your album. What is it called? Alone at Last. Alone this at is my last. solo acoustic album. It's all me, all just acoustic guitars and vocals. A very challenging session for me, and I, it was originally released in 2006. I saw a, a used copy going on Amazon for $1,500. And I thought, well, that's a little that's a little pricey. Maybe I should just remaster it, add oh, some bonus wow. tracks, and re-release it. Uh, so we've got this now available to our fans for, uh, uh, we've dropped a couple of zeros. It's only 15 <laughs> bucks now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> then it's appealing to most of us who have $15 in our pocket. Well, it's, it's a very personal statement for me, and yeah. it's, it's something that you'll see at the show tonight at the American Legion. Just me, Wonderful. my guitar, my songs, my voice, and my stories. It's a very challenging uh, format because you've got no smoke, lights, bells, whistles, no band to fall back on. It's yeah. really you up there. It's it's uh, it's very challenging and very rewarding when you can uh, have a packed house like that and, and you can feel it that after the first song, you're winning them over and you're, right. you're, you're giving them an, an entertainment experience. So it's not just a guy sitting there sure. with a guitar. I'm, uh, I'm pretty animated. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I believe that, I believe that. But you're gonna be performing a song for us coming up after the break. What I'd love it, to. What is it called? I'd like to do a song for you called Just Like Tennessee. It's off this Alone at Last Deluxe Edition album. And it's uh, certainly one of the, I think one of the best songs I've ever written and a song that always seems to work for me. So I'd l love to share it with Wonderful. you and your viewers. I can't wait. Thank you okay. so much, Ron. We're back after this. I went back out to the desert to see the open sky, but the clouds came rolling in and the wind began to cry. The rain started pouring down washing over me from a thousand miles away it was just like Tennessee I 
put the past behind me to make a brand new start Let those memories in the dust follow in my heart But the desert rain reminds me it just wasn't meant to be I'm 2,000 miles from nowhere And it's just like Tennessee I'm searching for a sunrise when I won't call your name I'm begging for salvation if there's no one left to blame I'm hungry for forgiveness even though you set me free My heart's in Arizona But it's just like Tennessee Well, there's a street here they call Broadway, but it ain't quite the same. And a bar where I've been singing and drinking down the pain. That neon moon is rising, watching over me, all alone in Colorado. It's still just like Tennessee. I'm waiting on a sundown. Call your name I'm begging for salvation If there's no one left to blame I'm hungry for forgiveness Even though you set me free I could be home in Carolina But it's just like Tennessee I'm still 2,000 miles from nowhere It's just like Tennessee I went back out to the desert To see the open sky 